Hey beautiful people, what's up? My name is Mark and I love making things sweet and in style. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share and this is where I do anything and everything creative. So for today, the long long wait is over. I know I've been so busy the past days with my gardening stuff. So if you're someone who is interested to plants, you can actually check my other vlogs that is related to gardening. So for today, I know the rainy season is actually coming and a lot of you are problematic about your flowers melting, your figures melting. So I'll be sharing with you one of my nine flower paste recipe, which is very strong when it comes to humidity. You can actually use this flower paste um, if it's very rainy and then if your area is open. And then the good thing about this, you can put it inside the refrigerator and once you take it out, it won't melt. Okay, and by the way, just a disclaimer, this is not Gluma paste. This is not easy paste. It's not rice paste. You won't be using any rice flour here. And it's actually very, very easy to make. So without further ado, let's start. Hi guys, I'll be sharing with you the simplest ingredients that you actually need for you to make my flour paste that I call as the no sugar flour paste that you can actually use if it's very humid. Although it does not harden that much, you can actually adjust the, the hardness of the paste by adding in more tylose powder, okay? So basically what I have here is one cup of corn flour or corn starch. And then I have here another corn starch which is one fourth cup, okay? So I'm going to put on the description box below the measurement in grams so that if you don't have a measuring cup, you can also use a weighing scale. And then what I have here is a one fourth cup of glucose. And then you have to use a container uh, for the glucose or the wet ingredients. You have to use a container that is microwavable. But if you don't have a microwave, you can also use a double broiler method because basically we just have to heat this up until it's boiling point, okay? So what I have here is the one cup of cornstarch. So what I will do, I'll get my tylose powder. If you don't have tylose powder, you can also use CMC powder or gum tragacanth. Basically, this will just add in the elasticity uh, just to bind the paste together. So this is one tablespoon of tylose powder. Okay, and then you just have to mix this all together. Just like that. Um, the only downside of this flour paste, I would say, is that it does not have any taste at all. Okay? So if you want to add flavoring, you may do so. Uh, in my opinion, it's better to add the flavoring around one tablespoon or one half tablespoon. Okay? Just like so. So everything is well mixed. So we'll proceed with the wet ingredients, okay? So I have here one fourth cup of glucose. Again, you can check on the description box below the measurements in grams. I'll be adding my one fourth cup of water. This is ordinary room temp drinking water, okay? And then I'll be adding my one tablespoon of um, vegetable, vegetable oil, okay? If you don't have vegetable oil, you can also use coconut oil. Okay, so you only need one tablespoon of vegetable oil. Just pour it in. And then after that, you have to put this on the microwave for one minute first. Okay, at medium high. So we'll pop this in the microwave. Okay, so after one minute of heating in the microwave, it's now more liquid. So you have to mix this well. And we have to put it back on the microwave for about 2 minutes until it's boiling point, okay? So you have to see a lot of bubbles already before you pour it on our cornstarch because the boiling temperature of the glucose, water, and oil will actually cook the cornstarch, okay? But if you don't have a microwave, if you're using a double broiler method, you just have to keep on stirring until it produces a lot of bubbles. This one, the wet ingredients. And once there's a lot of bubbles, can actually pour it in directly okay so we'll put this back in the microwave for two minutes on medium high okay so after the two minutes you'll see there's a lot of bubbles it's already boiling so you have to pour it in directly on our cornstarch okay see that and then we will start mixing this together Basically, you just have to mix everything else well. Okay, so I'm just 
mixing everything up, folding it. Okay? And eventually, it will come to a point wherein it will form just like so. You see that? So I'm just folding it in. And you actually have a paste already. And you have to be very careful because this is really, really hot. Okay? So I'm using a rubber spatula here to actually fold it. Just like that. See that? The consistency of this paste is actually very similar to rice paste, but this is more accessible because I know in some areas you don't have access to uh, rice flour. So this one you only have to use corn starch or corn flour. Okay. So once you have something like this and everything is formed, you see that? This is the perfect time for you to knead everything together. So if it's still too hot, if you can handle the heat, um, I also use a scraper for me to fold it, okay? So I'll be taking this out already on this container or bowl. And the reason why I have this 1 fourth cup of cornstarch, this is only for kneading purposes, okay? This is the one that is separated. This is around 35 grams or 1 fourth cup. So this is what just we'll be using to dust the area so it's not going to be too sticky, okay? So what I'm going to do now, I'm just gonna dust very little, okay? And then make sure that your area is very clean, okay? Because this is also very sensitive to pigments. And then we're just gonna pop it right there. Okay, and then you have to put shortening on your hands so that it won't stick. So for the shortening, I'm always using Crisco or Poratos, just that amount. Spread evenly, okay. And then we will start kneading. Be careful, this is too hot. Okay, you have to knead it until it's hot so that it will be binded together. But if you cannot handle the heat, um, if you have a silicone mat, you can actually use a silicone mat for you to fold them in together or just a scraper like this and then press. See that? Press. And then after this video, um, on my next tutorials, I'll be showing you how to make this gorgeous flower using this specific flower paste. Okay. So even though this can handle humidity, it's not waterproof, okay? There's no such thing as a waterproof flour except for rice paste. Although rice paste also melts with water, okay? If you soak it in water for too long, uh, this just can handle humidity compared to gum paste, okay? So let's say if it's raining too hard and then you can't make flowers, you can actually use this paste. So you have to continue on kneading until the paste is very smooth. So you'll see, um, see that? This is this should be the texture, okay? So we still have to continue kneading this because it's not yet that smooth. Okay. So as you can see when I am kneading, I'm just pressing with my palm. Okay. Just like that. And then you can actually have shortening on the working space just for the last coating around this much put it on your working area okay you can actually put some on your hands just to coat it to make it more shiny and smooth and i'm gonna show you a pulling test and you'll find this really funny because it's very similar to air dry clay or cold porcelain the texture although this one is a hundred percent edible take note this is very hot okay although my hands are used to things that are hot okay so we'll do a elasticity test okay you see that so when you pull it it should form like that okay so that's when you know that the paste is already okay uh you can store this on the fridge and then you only have to take out a small chunk and let it thaw for about 30 minutes to 1 hour on room temperature if you're going to use it, which I'll be showing in my next videos. Okay, you see that? This is very nice. Okay. Uh, this one lasts for about 2 to 3 weeks inside the refrigerator. 
it can last longer for about two months. Uh, the only difference is it's gonna be a little hard. So my suggestion is if you will use it, you have to thaw it in room temperature for about 30 minutes to one hour, okay? And then you only thaw the amount that you'll be using so that you won't damage the entire paste. See that? This is very pretty. Um, you can actually make the petals really thin using this paste. See that? You can make it thin. And the good thing about this, it's very translucent and all the ingredients are actually very cheap. You see that? I love the texture of this one because it holds its shape very well. So even if it's raining, the paste won't be that hard, but it holds its shape and it does not melt. Also, when you make a flower like this, you can put this inside the refrigerator and take it out. It's not going to melt, okay? So, if you're going to store this, basically, you just have to roll until it's smooth, just like that. You see that? It's as smooth as our lovely face, okay? So, what I do, I just get a Ziploc, okay? So, put it inside the Ziploc bag. And then make sure there are no airs inside and then you have to lock. And then I put this on another ziplock or I put it on a Tupperware. Okay, and then don't forget to put the date so that you would know how long your paste is already. Okay, or the age of your paste. This is already good to use. No need for resting. Okay, that's very easy. And on my next video, I'm going to show you how to make flowers using this paste. Okay, thank you. Bye.